The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Traders Corner's July Special Online Trading Summit. Thank you for joining us today. We have a great lineup for you with seven of the industry's most experienced and knowledgeable traders. They're here today to help us navigate the financial markets in an incredibly volatile trading environment. With interest rates and inflation rising and the possibility of a recession looming, now more than ever, it's imperative to have professional guidance and a prudent strategy to minimize risk and maximize gain as much as possible so you can safely take advantage of the volatility in today's trading environment. The good news is we've handpicked seven professional trading mentors of the highest caliber with over 125 years of combined trading experience. They've agreed to bring their best strategy trading in today's market conditions in a free educational forum designed to minimize risk and maximize rewards. So let's not waste any more time. Today's show is gonna be one of our best shows to date. Our first presenter was in the fire service for 40 plus years and just retired in July of 2019. He started trading futures on his days off 40 years ago. If you struggle with the psychological side of emotions when it comes to money management, then our next presenter has the solution for you. It's a software program called the Discipline Manager. Ladies and gentlemen, here to present Control Risk with your Discipline Manager tool is Mr. Stephen Tremper of Tremper.com. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Steve. Uh, thanks, Rob. How are you? Are you able to uh, see my screen now? I could. Uh... You are live and projecting. There we go. Okay. All right. So let me go back to there. All right. Well, um, thanks again for the intro. Uh, my name is Steve, and uh, basically, like all the other uh, in, uh, presenters in here, I'm I'm just the you know standalone trader. I started you know when I was uh, still at the firehouse, and I I kind of got hooked on it and. Um, I actually had this uh, implemented for myself because I struggled with the discipline part of it. And so my hope uh, and intent is that this will help other traders overcome some of the same struggles that I've had and you know, still have. Uh, who am I kidding if I tell you I don't? So I, I still have the, you know, the revenge trades from time to time, but it's definitely uh, more controlled. So, um, so in today, I don't know if I can get this to change. Um, today, I just want to, you know, so I'll summarize here what uh, what is and do you need the discipline manager, and show you how uh, uh, to establish the rules because there are some settings in there that need to be done based on your rules, and and uh, show you some examples of what happens when those limits are breached, um, the cost, and then obviously some questions and answers, typically regarding settings that I'll talk about, and uh, and then how to download it and get a copy of it so you can play around with it. Um, again, as, uh, as Rob mentioned, my name is Steve. I've been in the fire service uh, for quite a long time. And I probably it was probably about maybe 15, 12 years ago that I, I started getting into the, you know, the uh, stocks and, and all that business, got involved in that and options and all that. And after failing and blowing out accounts in there, I kind of stumbled across futures. And that just kind of hit home a little bit. And, and I haven't looked back since. Uh, but you know, I still struggle with the psychology side of it, you know, the emotional side of it, especially when the, the, you know, you're one of those days and I'm sure you've all been there. And that's where, you know, it comes down to money management and how the discipline manager uh, came to fruition because of the fact that I just got so fed up with not able to control myself. So I'm like, I know what the rules and we just got to be able to, uh, to do it automated. And that's where it kind of started. Um, as far as the, you know, the U.S. government required disclaimers, um, you see this from time and time. Let me get that up. Sorry about that. Uh, time and time again, as far as, uh, you know, what you could reward and, and all that. And um, I, in this case, it's kind of ironic, though. Everybody in the presenters are talking about their indicators and whatnot that they have that would make you a better trader. And here I am with the discipline manager and basically halting you from, from trading. So, I mean, do I really need a disclaimer? I don't know. Um, so in any event, the, um, the money management statistics, uh, you know, 90% of traders fail. I mean, that's a lot. 80% lose, 10% break even, 10% make money consistently. Uh, and the main thing is just, you know, psychology, emotions, hope, greed, fear, regret, all that. And if you've traded for any little bit about a time, you'll realize that, uh, that, that, that is all plays a big role as far as, uh, um, you know, what, what makes or breaks you. 
Uh, obviously, lack of training plan contributes to all that. But uh, and as far as where I got that, it's just you know just Google it and just say you know what uh, just Google any of this business and you'll know. So it's not like I'm making it up. Um, there are just a lot of people out there that'll try it and and uh, you know say hey I think I'll be a day trader today and be a millionaire in two weeks. And it just doesn't doesn't work like that. So there's a lot of work that has to be put into it, and you know everybody's looking for the holy grail. But the main thing is you've got to protect your account uh, because if you don't protect that, then there's there's no point in trading. So uh, it's all about you know the money management and uh, why do you know traders fail? And it's just a failure to l limit the losses and and over trading. Um, I've been there on all those. The fear of missing out. Uh, um, and then, you know, waiting too long. So you, you do that for a while and you get in right away and you have some losing trades and then finally another one comes along, but you're afraid to jump in because you've been jumping in. And so now you're waiting for all everything to kind of line up. And before you know it, the trade's gone and you missed it and you really waited too long. So um, I don't think I'm saying anything that uh, anybody doesn't know that's traded. Um, basically, we need to cut the winner short. Uh, you know, cut the winner short in fear of giving back the profits. Um, we hesitate and pull in the trigger. Um, we hang on to losing trades, just waiting for it to turn. I know it's going to turn, so we'll just push that stop a little bit further. And uh, or jumping into unplanned, uh, I call that the board trade. You know, you're sitting there waiting, 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 and it's like, oh gosh, so, all right, it's missing a few rules, but I think it's going to go, and I'm running out of time, so I'm going to get in. And obviously, the market doesn't care about your time. So um, what you want to do is obviously you've got to define your your edge, define your risk, accept it, and um, you know then then if you accept all that business, go. And I started getting into algos, um, you know, a couple a couple years ago, um, no more than a couple years ago, I guess. But in any event, a while ago, and I just got you know it's it's the waiting thing. I just couldn't. I'm staring at the chart and looking for all the rules. That rule applies. That rule applies. That rule applies. And then finally, you know, you're missing a rule, so you got to start all over again. So five minutes go by, and you do it all over again. And I just got tired of waiting. And it's like I hate that four-letter word. And you know, it just got to the point like this is nuts. There's got to be a better way. And that's how I kind of got into to algos. But you know, even with that, you still have to be careful that uh, you know your setups are right. And 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 I've under the tool section on the webpage, I've got some algos in there that. Uh, we've been working on, but needless to say, is that for manual trading and discretionary trading, that's what it is. It's, and you have to have the psychology and the discipline to deal with it. Um, and and even if you are using the algo, you know when the when to pause it and when not to pause it. So I mean, it all comes down to basically you and when you turn it on. The psychology and discipline rules. Um, you need to deal with those losses. You got to get over that. Um, you know, getting out too quickly, holding on to positions, skipping trades due to due to uh, fear of loss, over trading. And, and here, I like this saying, actually, I didn't make this. Somebody came up with it and I kind of copied it because I loved it. And it said, the discipline manager cannot help you with your psychology, but will help you with your discipline. And that then will lead to a healthier psychology. And that makes total sense. And so I kind of grabbed that and I clung on to that one. So pink sun, because your psychology is, you know, it deals with all this. And actually we had some psychology uh, rooms, uh, courses, if you will. We have had a couple of them in the past, uh, six weeks long, and it dealt specifically with the licensed psychologist that was in the room with us. And we talked about these kind of things. And, um, you know, it, it, you don't have the problems if you've got the discipline to, to, to follow your rules, but, you know, to be honest with you, not a lot of people could, could do that. So you've got to control the losses, you know, whatever your average winning day is, and everybody has different account sizes, but, um, you know, you never want to lose more, uh, you know, on a bad day. And you've heard the, the, heard the saying, you know, surrender the fight, but not the battle. You know, everybody has a different account size. So, you know, using 1% and different percentages, you know, may or may not, um, you know, come into play if you're, if you're trading the little, you know, if you got a $5,000 account and you're trading a little micro, um, that's going to be different for traded mini. You know, you can blow it a lot faster. So, you know, Warren Buffett once said, rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. I love that. And that's why it's on here. So uh, the big, the four choices though, is, uh, is the, the big win, the small win, the small loss and the big loss. And we just got to get rid of that big loss. I don't have any problem at all. And I've learned, I would much rather get out quickly 
if it's not going in my direction and then relook at it, reevaluate it. And if it's still, if it's still going or if it starts to go again, just get in again. I mean, it's so minimal, you know, the brokers love it. Uh, it's, it's, it takes one click of a button to get right back in again. So I would much really get out because then if it starts going against me, uh, I'm not, I'm not happy. I, and if it, if it actually misses me or if I miss it, then, you know, I'd rather be out wishing I was in than in wishing I was out. So, um, stop losses and, uh, advanced trade management, the stop loss, uh, should be treated similar to the insurance policy. Uh, some people don't use them altogether, but that's like driving a car without insurance. So, uh, you never want to use it, but it's good if you, uh, if, if you need it, uh, if you needed it. So, um, think of it like that. You don't want to have it too tight, but on the other hand, if something happens, um, you know, catastrophically or, you know, glitch or somebody puts out a tweet or, you know, something happens in the current events, who knows? Um, it's, it's good to have something there. And uh, nobody knows the risk reward ratio. And people talk about risk reward ratios a lot, but, you know, what is the reward? Um, it, it's a probability if a particular trade setup will work, but the question should really be is the probability, what's the probability of trade success? Because you, you really don't know where that one's gonna go. Um, you know where where you don't wanna be in if, on the risk part of it, but the reward part, you really don't have that equation. So um, you, again, you gotta you know control the stops. So each market uh, trend has different characteristics and it's gonna be your job to, um, to know which one uh, has its own traits and how far it moves. And you really don't want to move your stop loss uh, or adjust it. You know, a few ticks here and there's no problem, but you know, you really don't want to keep going further and further and further. And it's better just to get out of the mention then. And don't get caught up in revenge trading. I've been there too. Um, you know, you do one, you do two, you do three, and like, oh, and then finally, you, all right, this one's gonna go, and so you just jump in. Bad, bad, bad outcome. Um, all right, so the audience poll. So I'm looking for what I'm thinking about doing is a stop lock. Stop, I'm calling it a stop lock. I don't have any other name for it. And if you're constantly moving your your um, stop further, further back, I'm thinking about it, it for maybe a future version, the possibility of adding this, which would give you, you would set your rules, your maximum allowed stop. Now you can move it closer, of course, and you can move it back, but you can't exceed this max stop. So uh, just hypothetically, let's say 20 ticks, you want to put it, your max stop is 20 ticks, but your default ATM, let's say is you know 12 or 18. Well, you're locked. It won't, it will not allow you to move that stop further back. So basically that would be a rule if that's something that, you know, I could see a demand for. Um, and that would just prevent it from happening. So I just wanted to kind of, Put that in your back of your thought and uh, see if that's something that you'd be interested in doing uh, or having for future additions and just waiting for your feedback on that one. So again, I go back to over over trading, revenge, uh, you know, impulse trades. And again, this is a survey. We really don't have to fill it out right now. You could just kind of think about it in your own head. Have you had problems with these over trading, revenge trading, the impulse, all of these combination of them? And if you look back honestly to yourself, you don't have to tell anybody, but you know, you've know you just got to overcome these. And that's basically where the trade manager comes into. So you know there were times where I kind of almost gave up, but you really can't because you never, eventually at some point in time, something's going to click. And for me, I had a, basically after a couple of years, I just wasn't doing what I should have been doing. And I actually just told myself, I am going to start all over from nothing. Like I'm brand new. And I just started all over. I started with, you know, one of the videos, like video number one, like I knew nothing and I came in and I just kind of came in with a new mindset, if you will. So that's it. I mean, how close you want to get. And then finally, you know, eventually, you know, it clicks to some people, just like the old math class in school. Um, some people just get it and some people have to struggle with it. And that's fine. You know, so you just got to de determine if you need a little help or not. Believe me, all these all these big firm have discipline managers there and they say, hey, they tap you on the shoulder and say, um, you're not having a good day, take the day off kind of thing. So why, you know, you're, you're by yourself alone. It's like, why don't you think you need help? Uh, Michael Jordan had a coach, Tiger Woods have coaches. I mean, who would think they do it? So eventually though, what's gonna happen is that, you know, you're going up, you're going up, here's your equity curve. <laughs> and, you know, you finally get it and it comes down. It's like, oh, and then finally at the very end, it's like, I did it. You know, I, I finally, it, things clicked and I'm able to, you know, kind of make sense of all this. And, and then that's when you're really gonna have, have the, 
um, the fun into it. Um, so basically, uh, what the distal manager is all about, it's protecting yourself from you um, with your personal you know, trading manager because that's who you're, you're dealing with, um, is, is your own fears and issues. So, and everybody kind of needs some mentor, or trading manager, or, or whatever. So, um, I kind of think of it like uh, in your business, you're the you're the owner, the CEO of your trading business, but then you had to hire an employee to do the training for you, and that employee is you. So you, as the CEO, create these rules of how much you're going to lose and the targets and what you're going to do, and then you give these rules to your um, employee and for for that employee then to go ahead and, and trade your rules well if you are the employee doing the trading you really you kind of emotionally are separated and so therefore by by having the discipline manager always there on your side it kind of takes uh, it, it adds another another step there so Again, manage uh, management rules. The discipline manager uh, is uh, designed to allow you to set your hard daily and weekly drawdown limits along with your goals, your goal limits, or goal, just goals in general, your targets, if you will. And if your uh, hard drawdown limits are hit, um, then you're done for the day or, or the week. If it's a weekly limit, you're done, and it will not allow you to make a trade. And if, if uh, again, depending if your goal is hit, it depends on your rule, you can trade. Once your goal is hit, you can continue to trade if that's in your, in your rules. Uh, but you never want to give back more than a percentage of the dollar amount of your goal. Um, and some people, some people have zero uh, percent. Once they hit their goal, I don't want to give zero back. And so therefore I'll stop them because I do have a couple of people that, you know, just keep trading and this allows them to stop and says, look, you made your money, stop. And uh, in any event, that's called your dynamic drawdown. If you wish to continue trading and maybe say 50%, um, you're, you make your goal and you're willing to, to play with 50%. And so now your dynamic drawdown will keep rising as it, your uh, equity curve keeps going up. And it will only allow you to give back 50% until the next goal is hit. And then it would change the percentage of whatever that might be. And this is based on the day or the week. And there's warning boxes. So for you don't have to have those, but there's warning boxes that if you have, uh, you're starting to approach and near your, your drawdown, it'll give you a timeout. I call it a timeout. But basically, it's like the circuit breakers that, that the markets have. And it'll give you a 15-minute timeout. And it'll say, hey, you're reaching, you're, you're nearing your, your uh, drawdown limit. So leave, go get a cup of coffee, go take a walk, uh, shake it off, come back in 15 minutes, and you can trade again and, and hopefully turn around. So just basically getting away from that current environment and getting a little different mindset. So basically, it's a 15-minute timeout. Um, this is not an indicator placed on your chart. It actually runs in the background. Um, I like to have it in a separate window, um, a little tiny. I don't need all the settings, but down, I just squeeze it down to like a two inch window. And all I want is the stats down at the bottom, which will show me my peak for the day. Um, and and I, I like that. So, uh, but you don't need it. You uh, you could actually close it once it's set up. And, and this is the, uh, uh, you can see down here, once you have the red uh, warning symbol there, that they're locked in. You can't, you can't do anything. Um, and even if it hit reset, it's not going to reset them until you relaunch Ninja. So it it really kind of there there was some discussion about locks and things like that, but it, it makes it hard. You have to kind of relaunch Ninja, and then you have to come in and reapply rules and things like that. So it could be done, but it's you know it's it just has to be consciously done. Okay. So example. So let's assume you set your your drawdown warning for three hundred fifty dollars, and your halt is set for five hundred. So once you close an order, and again, it, it's based on, uh, I call it hits. And, you know, once it hits your account, once you close that order and, and you breach, that's assuming you have unrealized, and I'll talk about that. Um, it, once, you, uh, once you hit that and you've breached $350, the discipline manager will have a circuit breaker and require a 15-minute timeout, as I talked about. And here's the little, the, you know, the error, the warning, and call the warning that says, hey, warning, uh, your trading is halting on sim account discipline manager 
or whatever account number you put in there and until you know the time and it shows you the time there that you can come back and so go get some coffee and you know, figure it out and so basically that's what it does the drawdown halt so now you come back after 15 minutes and now you've made a couple more losing trades and now you uh you've breached 500 dollars on the, the next trade or two and at that point you will not be allowed to trade for the said amount of time and i'm assuming you know we're, we're talking daily so for the daily the daily halt obviously weekly halts are bigger but the uh, daily halt is done for the day and you would get this warning that says hey you're halted for the day you're done this is the account um and it could be a playback account sim account whatever it is but whatever account that you've set for your rules this particular account is then halted for the day and you're done um so the disadvantage of reset I'll talk about that real quick um there's much discussion about you know the resets and some people suggested that you know don't don't allow a reset at all till the next day and then there was one here that said they wanted to give a password to their spouse and so that way they would have to go to their spouse for the password and and uh, there that's your discipline manager i guess um but at the end basically you know you're the owner of this trading business of yours and you should be able to make the decisions and the final decisions based on you know your business and what's right for you so there is a, a, a reset in there for the discipline manager window but as i as i said you have to you know open up discipline manager go down to reset uh at the bottom right hand corner as you saw and then um in order for it to take effect though you have to actually close and relaunch Ninja. And when you come back into Ninja, you won't have any, any settings at all. You'll have to go back into the Discipline Manager and reset your numbers. Well, if you keep the same numbers, you've already been breached. So as soon as you hit a trade, it's gonna say, hey, you've breached. So you would actually have to make those numbers bigger. So you're kind of stretching it. And so now you're doing things on the fly, last minute. Numbers and settings and things like that really should be done on playback, market replay over the weekend, um, evening, after hours, not in the heat of the day when you're sitting there in the middle of the thing and you get and you want to just reset it real quick because you want to take another trade because I know I'm going to be right. And, and there you start just, you know, starting that swirling downhill kind of thing. Um, so if you want to reset the vessel manager on the same account, the numbers obviously have to be larger. Otherwise, you'll turn them right back on again and they'll, they'll, you'll get breached right away. So. Um, and there's some of the settings we're going to go over. Um, you, you pick your account um, right here. You pick your account, and then you put in your settings. Your daily goal says 500, and of that, you have a warning at 30%. Now, if you don't want a warning at all, you could just I just put 999 in there, just that way it'll never be hit. Um, so basically, at 30%, you're going to um, you know get your warning 50%, and then there's your weeklies. And there, there's your daily PL down there, your stats. That's the little window that I like to shrink down to and just show the stats on there. So um, so when you hit your goal, let's talk on a positive side. Now, when you hit your goal um, and you've reached it, you get the notice here that says, congratulations, you've hit your goal on this particular account. And now your dynamic um, rules are going to apply. And and though and that is you know based on what it is so it's two rules of thumbs with with goals here you can hit your goal and you're done for the day as i said earlier you know because i won't give anything back just turn it off time for day drinking um or you can continue to trade but you really don't want to give back any of your hard-earned money and whatever that is is up to you you know percentage wise 50 percent 30 percent heck you could even do you know say 100 percent and basically you're playing with house money and if you end the day uh, you know, giving it all back, well, at least you're really not out of it totally. Uh, you might want to go 90% to cover commissions, but you know, that's all up to you. You're the boss. And once your goal is hit, then the dynamic uh, drawdown rule becomes effective and will halt trading if those are breached. So if you have 50%, you know, as your, as your dynamic drawdown, you've breached X goal, you've come back 50%, you're done for the day. And you know you're allowed to trade, but you can't give more than that back, and it's done. And don't forget commissions. If you have commissions, um, they will apply uh, to your account. Uh, as I said earlier, you're the CEO of the business. You know you delegate your rules to the discipline manager and allow it to monitor your trader, your trading employee, which basically is you, along with the janitor and the, everything else you do. Um, 
If your training employee gets out of line, your discipline manager will control the losses on your behalf, yours meaning the CEO of the company or basically your spouse. Um, at the following CEO meeting, you know, evening or weekend, you may wish to reevaluate your settings and then reset them up for the upcoming week for your employee. So that's how you kind of got to think about your business. And um, so just as a circuit breaker warnings discussed earlier, let's assume you, you know, you set your drawdown warnings at 30 percent. Uh, assuming your goal is at 50, the trigger is a circuit breaker. Uh, once you break, once you come down to three, you lose 150 bucks, it'll pop up saying you got a timeout um, and you get there. And then as far as your dynamic drawdown, um, you know, once you've, once you've realized your balance has exceeded your goal, your initial drawdown now let's say is 50. So you're able to play with $250 and, and uh, your balance grows as your balance grows, so will your percentage. So it's always going to be 50% of whatever your highest, you know, number is. And obviously you can see there, you bring your balance up to uh, 1,500. Then obviously 30% of that, you're going to get your 15 minute timeout if you come down to 1050 and you're going to be halted at 750. And again, all these numbers are based on you. Obviously you probably don't want to have that if you're doing micros, um, you know, so this is all based on whatever you're trading and whatever market you're trading and, you know, how you're trading. And um, so there it is. So you've reached your, 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 um, your drawdown, your dynamic drawdown, and you're going to end the day with your, with your, your money. And there's a show right there, $700. So it's half of it. Okay. So the new version back in November, we added a few features. We added the max trades and max losses. And we also added two levels. And so a lot of things, and I'm thinking we probably should change the name of this, but it really is a trade. And I really got to emphasize how this kind of works. A trade does not mean a setup. Uh, a trade is just that. It's a hit on your account. So for instance, when you take a trade, the very first thing that's going to happen is the broker is going to say, I want my money and put a commission onto your account. Boom, that's a trade. And so now you're going along and and now you take off the, you take off the, you know, hit your target and it comes off and your account is realized, boom, that's a trade. So that's two trades. But a lot of people call that a trade. Actually, that's a setup. So, you know, when you have, when you're trading a setup, that consists of multiple trades, the, the commissions. If you have two contracts, you're going to put the first one on, then another one goes on later, possibly, or if they both go on simultaneously without any kind of hesitation and they go on simultaneously, then, then that's going to be a trade onto your account. When you take the first target off, that's a trade. When you take the second target off, that's a trade. So you can see how you could accumulate, you know, three, four, five trades, quote unquote, hits on your account. So when somebody puts, I only want to have three trades in the course of the day, I want to be really specific. If you put three on there, well, you'll be done a lot sooner than you think. And then the other thing we put on there was the max uh, levels of, um, uh, so you could change them. So when you start getting up to a higher level, you might not want to give back 50% anymore. You want to narrow that up. So once you get up to a higher level, you might want to change your percentage. So you say, when I reach this, I only want to give back maybe 30% or 25% or zero. You're done. Rich goal two, you're done. So, um, okay. And then the bottom portion of it, um, uh, the other latest things we've added uh, in November 22 was the naked the naked position because I was, again, doing a lot of things with algos and sometimes I found naked positions and didn't like it. So if you have that checked, it'll... If you, if you don't use stops, it, it, you don't want to do that, of course. But if you are using stops and it finds a naked order, it'll just kill it in a couple of milliseconds. Um, okay, defaults. Oh, the export, the TXT file for settings just makes it the, and the beta version is now available. Um, the drawback. Okay, let me talk about that real quick. Our main obstacle of disadvantage cannot suppress market orders. So if you think you're gonna, you've, you've reached your goals, you put on a limit order and it takes it right off and says you've reached your goals. And then you're like, well, I'm gonna be smarter than that. I'm gonna just put on a market order. So you throw on a market order real quick and it takes it. And then discipline manager sees it within a millisecond, takes it off. And now you're stuck with commission thinking you could outsmart it. It's not gonna work. It's just gonna take it off. So you get stuck with maybe some slippage and some commissions. So um, now we are we are trying. There's a number there for a, a ninja that that ID SD thirty one forty nine. You could certainly call Ninja and say, Hey, where's it at in your to do list? And that's they call it suppressing manual orders. So if you try to do that market order, 
in the future, it will say, no, you can't do that. And it will just eliminate that. But right now, until they, until they have that feature of suppressing manual orders, there's nothing I can do about it. So getting started, uh, currently the subscription is offered as a subscription. Uh, basically, I mean, you're probably not going to need this for the rest of your life. You need this for, um, you know, however long it takes you to get past your issue and your psychology issues. But um, if you do want it, um, it's certainly available monthly um, and then the annually. And the download, there's a free download for 20 days. And it's all done through PayPal because I don't have to get involved in it because I'm just a one man show. And um, you control your, you know, when you want to turn it on and turn it off. And, and it's pretty much simple as that. PayPal makes it very easy to cancel anytime. Just log on to your account, then go to your subscriptions and say turn it off. So where to get it? Um, so you go to the homepage, trumper.com. Um, it's kind of simple, it's just my name. Um, and then go under tools. And under tools, now this is growing a lot. Um, the, it's the very first one, by the way, because um, it's probably, well, it's my favorite anyway, but um, the discipline manager is right there on top and you could pull that one. Now you'll notice, or when, if you do go there live, you'll see some changes in there and we have some entry signals and we have um, some strategies, which are algorithms and whatnot. Um, and you know, you're more than welcome to look at like the, the helix and the, uh, and the entry signals are in there. For, and then there's all these I've done for myself. These are all done that I've done for me. And I've just put out some of these, a lot of these are free actually. Um, you know, the price extensions, you can read about that. Status box is one of my favorite and easiest things. That, I, I love that one. Uh, and target zones is a good one too. And those are all free. And just, I just did them for me. And if I could share them, then, you know, have at it. Um, the price options are right there. I'm going to probably redo the page a little, make it a little easier to find. The price options are there. It takes you to the uh, to the price plans, and then there obviously you have the another link, the the link there. You can just download it and play with it for 20 days, um, and then you know I would recommend doing you know market replay, setting setting it, doing it, and making some bad trades, making some good trades. And uh, but today, um, due to the overwhelming response from Traders Corner, uh, we have a special Traders Corner special, and that is 30% off for a limited time only. So as part of this webinar, being here, the uh, Distal Magic will be downloaded using the hidden discount button that I have on Trumper.com with the 30% off monthly price uh, for the lifetime of the subscription. Now, if you have it for a year plus, whatever, then that will remain in effect. If you turn off your subscription and then you want to start it a month or two later after you blow your next account, which happens quite often, um, that price will be going, obviously. Uh, the thing of it is, this expires in three days. So if you go get the, the free trial, the 20-day free trial, um, and then you wait 20 days, you won't get this price because this will be gone. Um, so this trial, this particular link that I'm going to show you has a one-day trial on it. So if you want to try it for a couple of days and then and then do this, you'll have a one-day trial on that link, and it'll start right away. But if you wait the full days, the sale will be over, the full 20 days, I'm sorry. So this discount coupon is, go if you go under referrals, I have it hidden for a reason and I'll take it off in three days. So it's only gonna be there for a little while. So if you go to referrals and you go down to discount codes, now here's a bunch of prop firms that I have because there's a lot of people that have been trading the prop firms. And so I have the pros and cons to some of them and they're all in there. You can look at how much they give and percentages, et cetera. But what I do and what I've been doing for, uh, all line people and I, I constantly change in this discount code. So click on discount codes and it takes you to who's offering discount codes at the particular time. So you might want to use this as a source to say, hey, you know, who, who's given some, uh, some, uh, some codes right now. But at the very, very bottom, scroll through all the expired codes at the very bottom of it, you'll see the discipline manager link with a 30% off uh, button. So that's what it's going to take you to the PayPal with this price. And as I say, in three days, it will be gone. And when you get to PayPal, and if you're not familiar with it real quick, it's going to show, you know, zero price because it's zero price. If you uh, click on that little carrot down there and go down, you'll see the stip stipulations that it's going to be, a, you know, zero price right now for, um, and then it's going to turn into $34.95 each month until it renews and you want to renew it. So if you're familiar with PayPal, it's, you know, kind of, Kind of easy um and of course if you have any questions at all and specifically settings because settings are you know if you're new to it you you kind of got to understand it there is uh under the discipline page there's some I, I would recommend 
looking at the overview and the settings detail because I go, I have a video on there that talks in depth about the setting and what you could expect, et cetera. So I would certainly recommend looking at that to cover it. But if there are any questions, by all means, this is how you would do it. Just go to contact and there's all my information. Um, we got the Skype traders group that you're more than welcome to, to join for traders. Um, um, info at Trumper.com is the uh, Skype name you could search for or the Skype invite link. It just goes right to me and then I could uh, we can connect that way. Or uh, the old fashioned email still works and the really ancient phone number still works. Uh, but that basically goes to a recording and I get it that way. So uh, without further ado, if anybody has any questions, um, there's my contact information again. Here's your equity curve from the COVID crisis. And um, if there are any questions, I'm trying to stay on time. So I got about a few minutes for questions. Other than that, um, Rob, I think I'm done. And I don't know where to see questions on my chat. You've got uh, about uh, 10 minutes and there's a question in the box from one of your uh, current users, I think. I'm using the manager and have a question. It seems as if when shutting down Ninja each day, that upon reopening Ninja, you have to do a reset each day. Is that correct? Or does the manager retain its settings from one day to the next? That's no. by Ron. Yeah, it sounds to me like, I'm trying to find chat areas here. It sounds to me that, um, hold on, I'm just trying to open this thing up so I can see those. Um, if you see questions in the control box, there's a little right arrow that if you click it, it becomes a down arrow. Oh, questions, chat, questions. Okay, well, whatever. I'll, and in any event, I'm, I'm more used to Zoom because we have the trade room and we have our social hour on Zoom under the community tab. And uh, we have social hour and I'm, you know, we're there every day yakking. So um, I'm more familiar with that versus go to webinar. But in any event, it sounds to me like you might have your weekly setting. That's to answer your question. No, it shouldn't do that. Um, sounds to me like you might have your weekly goals maybe off a little bit because that will keep your history for the week. So if you have, let's say $700 for the week and you have uh, $500 for the day, well, the next day, the second Tuesday, you lose, so you lose 500, or I'm sorry, your, your uh, loss is halt. So you lose $500 on Monday, you come back on Tuesday, it'll allow it, you do it, but you lose $500 on Tuesday. Well, you've reached your week or you've breached it. So now when you come back on Wednesday, you, you've breached it, you're done. So you can't, you can't trade because you're done. So that might be a little too low. And the way to test it is just put 99999 in there and, you know, get it way out of the way. And you could, you know, eliminate both of them, by the way, both of them, because uh, there's two goal, weekly goal one, weekly goal two, and uh, eliminate those weekly goals altogether. And, and and then you know put your, your goalie. But at the end of the day, it should it should clear. Now, if you're doing it in market replay or playback as they call it now, um, I don't think the playback differentiates the day. And I could be lying. It's been a long time since I've done it. So you would have to use the slider tool or the go to to the different day for it to kind of recalculate a new day. But then it wipes out all your your values, so it's a little different with playback mode. But to test it, you can you could do just that. You could uh, put in a daily goal and put in a weekly goal and blow the weekly goal on purpose, you know, um, and then try to you know and then try to do it again. Um, that one might be a little hard to do in playback, but certainly in sim, uh, you can go ahead and create your sim 101 account or just make a new sim 102 account or something for testing and make them low values do a sim trade on monday and blow it and then do a sim trade on tuesday and blow it and see if your weeklies pop up or try it again don't blow it don't blow it don't blow it and and as long as these are out of the way you, it should not be doing that you should not have to hit reset every day i mean that defeats the whole purpose if, if anything we don't want you to hit reset as a matter of fact as those other people uh asked for is not to have a reset or to give it to the spouse well you can see how if there's a, a glitch or an issue or something like that or something it's it's always in the settings and and uh and that's that's what uh you really and that's why i say reach out and actually there is in this newest version that you have uh, if i can find it here is the settings where to go uh maybe I, there's a settings 
Anyway, down at the bottom, there's a button that says export file in the settings menu. It's under stats. I thought I saw it right here. There it is right here. Uh, so it's right here. So export. So export that. It puts a little on your dashboard. It puts a little TXT file. And it'll just basically have all your settings. And what I uh, ask people to do is Skype them or email them over to me. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. And it's really good. You know, you set your settings. You're thinking it's going to be what it's going to be. And then I, I sent you the settings. And I'll send you a little, little you know, uh, synopsis back of okay when this happens this will happen when this happens this is going to happen then this is going to happen and this is going to happen and when you read that you realize well i don't want that to happen so there's your issue so that way i'll explain to you what will happen just to kind of clarify it so by all means i'm i'm there for you um or if you want to go to social hour if you go on the, go on the web page go to community on social hour i'm there pretty much most of the time and if i'm not there um there's usually someone there that is familiar it's traders helping traders that's the whole theory behind it i call it i wanted to call it the virtual bar but um i did a little survey and everybody said social hour was you know more politically correct so um but basically uh you know we just kind of some days there's more than others you can never tell some people come in go out you know some people just listen you know whatever my theory is is and i always have my i try to if i'm not driving or something i try to put my my camera on because my theory is is that as you get to know people you know they're traders you know they're in their trade cave and they're you know they're doing their thing and and it's a lonely sport so you, you start to get to know these people and i've met a lot of great guys and but the thing of it is when you need help on something who do you go to it's your go-to guys and there's guys in that room that are and gals there's uh that are uh, computer um you know one guy worked for like dell there's some engineers in there, computer engineers, coders. I mean, there's people in there that are pretty darn savvy with Ninja, as and I think I am a little bit pretty savvy with Ninja. So, um, I mean, there's always somebody in there um, that could help you with it. But but that by all means, reach out into Social Hour uh, there, or just you know email me the old-fashioned way. But if you're going to email me, send me that export file with the TXT file that that is put on your dashboard, and I'll be more than happy to. To reach out and make it work but the long and short of it no it, you shouldn't have to be resetting every day all right steven the one other question real quick was does it work across multiple workspaces works it works on your account as i said earlier you don't have to have a chart open you, once you set it you're done it works on the account so when you go to uh, if you notice at the very top here you get to pick your account so and it doesn't go on, you have to do each account independently. Now there is a button down at the bottom that says save as default. So assuming you might have one account for micros, one account for mini, you know, whatever it might be, different account sizes, every account has to have their own. So you can make your settings like this and then save as default. So next time when you switch to a new account, it'll it'll be there and then you can just tweak a little bit or something like that. Or if you don't want to tweak, you just, just you have to apply them for each each account. And when you get the red, that means it's applied right there. Now you know it's applied because you got the red. When you hit, when you hit, well, it, you don't get the apply right now because you're on a reset. But um, if you if you see apply there, you're not going to see the red. Once you hit apply, it'll be a pop up saying and describing what I just told you. And I would recommend reading it the first time. That pop up there is there for a reason, and it's about those trades. And you know what counts as a trade. I don't use the trades. Um, I, I don't care if I take a you know million trades a day. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's. Uh, but but I do know the reason why that was put in there was by request. People want to be limited, only taking the best of the best. So um, if you are using that, uh, fine. If you're not, just put nine 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 in there, and you don't have to worry about it. But in any event, that little pop up shows you how it's calculated. And a trade is any hit on your account. And you do not need to have, so to answer your question is, is that you get a multiple workspaces, multiple charts, doesn't matter. It's the account. It's the account that gets hit. And if the account is breached based on your rules, then that's going to stop. And if you want to go see it, then you can pull up the discipline manager and see where it's at. And it's under, um, the discipline manager is not an indicator. It's, it's going to be under new and then down at the bottom, it'll be there. And you can pull it up and you can see your stats down at the bottom and see why you got hit or, or something like that. Or do what I do and just kind of leave a small little window on and you can see it. Um, but each one has to be 
you know, as I say, each one has to be, uh, each account has to be accounted for. And if you have multiple machines, as I do, and if you have multiple connections to that same account, so I could have two machines on the same account. I could take a trade on machine one and a machine two, and it's fine. So you do not need to have the discipline manager on each machine. You have to have it on the account. If your machine one is not on that account, then it's not going to be monitored. But if even if it's like it's your phone or whatever, if the discipline manager is on somewhere and it's attached to that account and it's on on one of the machines, if you trade that account on your phone, then the the uh, the, the computer will have that and be able to note, see that it see that it tripped and it will account it accordingly. Hope that explains it. All right. Well Thank you so much, Steve. Your discipline manager tool, discipline manager tool sounds great. Ladies and gentlemen, if your emotions are getting in the way of your trading, Stephen Tremper of Tremper.com has the solution. If there's any more questions, would you please direct it to him in an email? You can find Steve at Tremper.com. His tool has been a game changer for so many traders struggling with overtrading and many of the other emotional issues that traders commonly face.